In the year 1985, a wave of terror swept across Japan that shook the nation to its core. A chilling mystery was about to unfold, one that would leave a permanent scar on the country's collective memory. This was the year of the Paraquat murders, a horrifying series of indiscriminate poisonings that held the nation in a grip of fear. The poison of choice was the herbicide Paraquat, a lethal substance known for its unforgiving toxicity. The victims were unsuspecting consumers, their only mistake being the purchase of a beverage from a vending machine. One lethal sip, and their fate was sealed. The first victim, a man named Haruo Otsu, was the beginning of a terrifying pattern. His untimely demise was soon followed by another, then another, and before the nation knew what was happening, there were 35 poisonings. Eleven of these unsuspecting individuals never made it back home. Their lives cut short in the most unexpected, horrifying manner. These were not targeted attacks. The beverages were picked at random, their contents tampered with, turning them into deadly cocktails. The primary target seemed to be the Aronomen Seed Drink, known for its buy one, get one free promotion. The killer seemed to have a cruel sense of irony, transforming a symbol of joy and refreshment into an instrument of death. As the death toll rose, fear gripped the country. The once innocuous act of buying a drink from a vending machine was now fraught with danger. The vending machines, once symbols of convenience and modernity, were now seen as potential death traps. Despite the best efforts of the authorities, the perpetrator remained a faceless entity, earning the chilling moniker, the vending machine killer. This was a crime that shook Japan to its core, a mystery that remains unsolved to this day, and a reminder of the dark side of humanity that lurks in the shadows. The vending machine killer had a peculiar and horrifying method, exploiting the most mundane of daily routines. The everyday act of grabbing a drink from a vending machine, an innocent task we often do without a second thought, was perverted into a mechanism of terror. This shadowy figure primarily targeted the popular Oronomin Sea Drink, a beverage loved by many across Japan. The killer seemed to have a particular fondness for exploiting the buy one, get one free promotion, a marketing ploy designed to draw in thirsty consumers and instead used it as a conduit for his deadly poison. The poison of choice was the herbicide Paraquat, a substance as lethal as it is fast acting. This is a poison known for its unwavering efficiency, causing severe damage to the lungs, kidneys and heart. Ingesting even a small amount can lead to fatal consequences. The horror of it all was amplified by the fact that one of the drinks was laced with an entirely different poison, Dequat, an equally potent and deadly chemical. The killer's method was chillingly meticulous. By poisoning these drinks, he transformed the vending machines into silent assassins. Each coin inserted, each button pressed, could potentially result in a deadly drink dispensed. The machines, once symbols of convenience and modernity, became instruments of fear, dispensing death as easily as they did refreshment. The simplicity of the killer's modus operandi was what made it so terrifying. Anyone at any time could fall victim to this indiscriminate predator. The public's trust in the safety and predictability of their daily routines was shattered, and a cloud of fear descended upon the nation. The simple act of quenching one's thirst turned into a deadly gamble, casting a shadow of fear over the entire nation. The authorities sprang into action, leaving no stone unturned in their quest for justice. As the grim reality of the situation sunk in, the Japanese authorities launched a full-scale investigation into the series of indiscriminate beverage poisonings that had gripped the nation in fear. This was no ordinary case, and they knew they were up against an adversary who was as cunning as they were ruthless. The first line of action was to inform the public to prevent further tragedies. The police started a massive campaign distributing leaflets with warnings about the danger lurking in their everyday vending machine beverages. No one was safe and the simple act of quenching one's thirst had turned into a potential death trap. Warnings were also posted directly on the vending machines. These messages served as a chilling reminder that the very source of refreshment they were reaching for could also be a source of imminent doom. The public was urged to exercise caution, to look out for any signs of tampering and to report any suspicious activity. The authorities also reached out to the Japanese Soft Drink Bottlers Association, urging them to cooperate in the investigation and to take necessary measures to ensure the safety of their products. The association, in turn, found itself in a tight spot, grappling with the horrifying reality that their drinks had been weaponized. 
Meanwhile, the investigation continued with relentless fervor. Evidence was gathered, leads were pursued, and persons of interest were questioned. The authorities were determined to bring the perpetrator to justice. They knew they were racing against the clock, for every passing moment could potentially bring with it another victim. Despite their best efforts, the investigation was fraught with challenges. The sheer audacity and unpredictability of the crimes made it difficult to predict the killer's next move. The lack of a clear motive further complicated matters, leaving the authorities grappling in the dark. Yet, the cunning and elusive vending machine killer managed to evade capture, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. As the days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, the case remained unsolved, shrouded in mystery. The investigation, though relentless, had hit a dead end, and the vending machine killer remained at large. The crimes ceased as abruptly as they had begun, leaving behind a legacy of fear and speculation. The aftermath of the Paraquat murders was a chilling period of uncertainty. Streets once buzzing with life became eerily quiet as people avoided vending machines. The innocuous fixtures of modern life turned deadly by an unknown assailant. The Japanese Soft Drink Bottlers Association, in a move that drew much criticism, blamed the victims for their tragic fate. They argued that the victims should have been more cautious. A stance that did little to quell public fear or bring any closer to justice the person responsible for these heinous acts. In the absence of any concrete leads, speculation ran rife. Some experts suggested that the crimes were a manifestation of Japan's intense and work-oriented society. They painted a picture of an overworked individual, driven to the brink by societal pressures who lashed out in a horrifyingly unique way. Others, however, dismissed this theory as mere conjecture. They argued that such a simplistic explanation did not account for the calculated nature of the crimes or the utter lack of remorse shown by the perpetrator. Theories abounded, but with no solid evidence to substantiate them, they remained just that, theories. The case, much like the vending machines that once dispensed both refreshment and fear, was left untouched. A chilling reminder of a time when terror came in the most unexpected form. The vending machine killer remains an enigma, a haunting reminder of a time when terror came in the most unexpected form. More than three decades have passed since the reign of the vending machine killer, yet the mystery remains unsolved. The chilling aura surrounding the unsolved case of the vending machine killer still lingers, casting a shadow not just over Japan but across the globe. This tale of indiscriminate poisonings that targeted innocent people seeking refreshment from a vending machine is one that continues to perplex and horrify us. The killer's modus operandi was as simple as it was sinister. A herbicide called Paraquat, deadly in even the smallest quantities, was used to contaminate drinks. The unsuspecting victims, drawn in by the promise of a buy one get one free promotion, had no way of knowing that the beverage they purchased would be their last. The investigators worked tirelessly, sifting through clues, distributing warning leaflets and seeking answers. Yet, despite their best efforts, the identity of the killer remained elusive. The clues dried up, the poisoning stopped, and the case gradually went cold. In the aftermath of the killings, speculation ran rampant. Some suggested that the crimes were a manifestation of Japan's intense, work-oriented society. Others blamed the victims themselves. Yet none of these theories brought us any closer to understanding the mind of the killer or their motivations. The haunting legacy of the vending machine killer serves as a stark reminder of the dark underbelly of our society, a world where a simple act of purchasing a drink can turn deadly. It underscores the chilling reality that despite our advancements in technology and forensics, there are still mysteries that we cannot unravel, questions that remain unanswered and monsters that remain hidden. So, as we conclude our journey into this chilling mystery, let us remember, the most terrifying monsters are not always those that lurk in the shadows or hide under our beds. Sometimes they are the ones that walk among us, invisible and unknown. As we delve into the depths of this chilling mystery, we are reminded of the haunting truth that sometimes the most terrifying monsters are the ones we never see.